What is up everyone? I am TST's The Mud Man and this is part 6 of looking at all of the new Mortal Judgment cards. I've been reading cards for hours. I'm going insane. <laughs> Let's jump right on in to nature. First card, Injured Sprout. Looks like a marsh walker. Let's keep reading. One mana, one for wild. Sounds like a marsh walker. Regen one. When this creature enters the battlefield, take three damage. Wow. This is the forgotten stepchild of Marsh Walker. <laughs> this is like Marsh Walker, but a million times worse in every single way, except for the card art, which is amazing. Um, next thing. Uh, Vulpine Collector. We've talked about this card a lot in the community. This was the first card reveal in the entire set. Two mana, three, two. Confused and Tempt Fate. So, just like I have said in all of the other videos looking at the cards, we don't know exactly what Tempt Fate does. Is one of the options protected? If so, this is really good one-sixth of the times. Next card, War's Wake. A two-mana spell. Summon two Injured Sprouts. So for two mana, you get two of these. So, you get two cards for one card, which is obviously good. Injured Sprouts are kind of bad. They are one mana one twos on the turn you play them, which means they get killed by axe women and you know value value killed by axe women. So uh, this is just like a way worse version of a lot of those deception cards because it says like instead of just getting two random one mana creatures, you get two like pretty bad one mana creatures. So that's War's Wake. On to the next thing. It is. Uh, uh, Sword Breaker Sage, a 3 mana 3 2 Amazon with Echo. Roar, remove 2 durability from your opponent's relic. Um, if this wasn't nature, the card would be way more exciting. Nature has so much relic removal, most of which is way better than this card. So, no need to talk about that anymore. On to Hibernating Ursine which is a 7 mana 8-8 eight, eight wild creature, which means that we will be pulling this off Veil Warden Minotaur every once in a while, so keep that in mind. At the end of your turn, if this creature has not attacked this turn, then heal it for full. That's cool. It's not confused. That's, like, important to realize. You usually want to attack most turns, but I guess in the rare corner cases when you don't, you can heal it. This card seems like a cool one to get off Bail Ward Minotaur, but a card that I would never put in my deck of my own volition. It just it breaks too many of the rules of seven mana cards. It doesn't have frontline, it doesn't have blitz, it doesn't kill anything the turn is played. Like this is this is way too low impact for seven mana. This is only gets played when you generate it randomly. But the next card, this one's actually good. This is uh Penumbra Howler. Definitely pronounce that properly. A 1 mana 2 1 wild creature with a roar. If you control two or more other wild creatures, give them plus one strength. Um, with cards like Best Friends, as well as like Crescent Werewolf, it's really easy to go wide with wild creatures, like as early as like turn two. So, uh, like, one mana for a potentially like plus five damage AoE buff? That seems. That seems decent. I, I bet this card is at least okay. At least okay. There you go. Uh, next card, Nemesis Wasp. A 3-mana three 3-3 three, three wild creature. There are a lot of 3-mana three 3-3s three at C play right now, so this is a good sign so far. It's got Tempt Fate. And at the start of your turn, this creature attacks a random valid target. Um, it doesn't say extra attack. And like that war card we looked at earlier said extra attack, so I assume that that random attack at the beginning of your turn is its only attack that turn? Which makes me not excited about this card at all anymore. That seems like... that seems bad. Like, Tempt Fate needs to, would need to be really good for that card to not be bad. Uh, so, on to the next thing. Bark Sworn Hunter. A 4 mana 3-2 Amazon with Echo Roar. Give plus two strength to this creature, then it attacks a random enemy creature. So, this is like a very expensive underbrush boar on the initial body, and then just like a slightly worse underbrush boar on the second body. You know, the second one's a one mana three one that attacks a random enemy target. It's better than underbrush boar in the sense that 
you get to see where it attacks before you end the turn, so you know you can do stuff after the attack. Um, but you know, obviously worse than underbrush boar because three three is bigger than three one. But underbrush boar is one of nature's best cards, and this makes you an underbrush boar that you can't play on turn two. You can play on turn four or five, but it's probably still worth it. This card's probably good. This this seems decent. Next card. Beast Liberator, 5 mana, 1, 2, yuck, horrible, those that's egregious, these stats, horrible, I can't get over it, uh, let's read the effect, Roar, summon a random 3 mana wild creature, so, um, 1, 2 is worth 0 mana, it's like half a mana worth of stuff, so the turn you play it, you spend 5 mana to get like 3.5 mana's worth of creatures, the creatures are partially random, so it's worse than 3, so let's call it five mana to get three mana's worth of stuff. However, the echo copy would be one mana to get like three mana's worth of stuff, or like four-ish. This card seems decent, but also not good enough to like actually put in your deck. It seems like something you'd be stoked on if you got it randomly. Actually, stoked is a strong word. It's, it's a five mana one-two at the end of the day. This card seems pretty bad. Um, but that brings us to uh, Furious Felid, which is an Olympian for nature. That's interesting. A 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with Roar. Deal 1 damage to each 1-mana creature. The Anti-Magic card. Cool. Uh, kill Zombies. Kills all the Magic 1-1s. One Might do other stuff too. Doesn't kill Aether Snaps. Or, they're not called Aether Snaps. They're called Static Aether Bugs. Doesn't kill those they have Ward. But still neat. Tech card in the meta already. Next card. 4 mana 3-3 three, three Amazon. Hopeful Druid once again with Echo. It has Roar. Give plus 1 health and plus 1 regen to a friendly creature. Um, so the, in, the, the initial version, the bad part of the card, is a 4 mana 3-4 with regen, essentially. That's not the worst thing in the world. And then the 1-mana one 1-1 one version is really good. It's an Amazon. It's an Amazon and it costs 4, right? The the main Amazon buff cards cost 5. So Amazons like 4-mana Amazons. Like The fact that I'm thinking that the 4-mana version of this card is like pretty playable is giving me a lot of hope. This, this seems good. I think this could be a good card. But next, we have the Albino Hydra. Look at that Hydra. He's so Albino. 7 mana, 6-6 six, six wild creature, so just like the hibernating ursine, we will be pulling these off of Bail Ward Minotaurs every once in a while. So, like I said, 7 mana, 6-6 six, six with Roar, deal 6 damage to your opponent's god. Uh, it's really interesting. It's like um, what's a Charging Oryx, but you know where it's going to go. This is another card where I don't think, I don't think you're going to put this in your deck necessarily like i don't think you would ever top off your deck with this i could be wrong it's not the worst card in the world but this is a card that when you get it off the veil warden minotaur you're gonna be really stoked on it like this is a strong card in those decks that are running the veil wardens uh this is definitely cool i like this card probably not enough to play it in my real deck but i'm excited to generate that randomly next up we have noxious arachnid a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one with Confused and Deadly. Man, I wish that didn't say Confused. This can't see play, right? This is way too easy to kill, and the Confused thing makes it so the Deadly is just a, a headache. Okay, that's that. Next card, Vexing Rascal. Look at this little rascal. He is a 2-mana 1-3 wild creature with Regen 1. When this creature is healed, deal 2 damage to the weakest enemy creature. So, like, if, if you didn't know, regening one does count as healing. So that's interesting. This is a card that needs, you know, surrounding pieces to make it good. So, uh, can't really evaluate this yet until we get finished reading the rest of the cards in the set. So let's get back to it. Agrador, Border Guard, a 3 mana 2 for Amazon with Frontline. At the end of your turn, heal a damage-friendly creature for 1. So that's essentially regen, but it's it's more friendly regen. It can help its teammates. It's a lot like Agador Protector, but it costs three. It's an Amazon. It has decent health. 
has frontline to protect your like canopy snipers and whatnot. This seems like a, a, a fairly decent Amazon card. I'm stoked on it. I bet this card's this card probably doesn't see play in like normal good nature, but is probably worth playing in like Amazon's. I give it a thumbs up. Next. Territorial Domination. One mana spell. Your strongest creature attacks your opponent's strongest creature. If your creature survives, fully heal it. Damn, that's so good. That's that's big. Taking a big value trade and fully healing your thing. Also, the implications with Sage of Renewal. This is Sage of Renewal's favorite new card. This is interesting. That's a high impact one mana spell. This is a late game one drop. This seems really good. I might be wrong. Maybe I'm overhyping it in my head, but this seems really strong. This seems like a better version of um, like Arrow of Rage is the card's name. Well, maybe not strictly better because like the attack's happening, so you can't go face if you do this. Well, yes, you can. You go face with your strongest creature, and then you play this domination thing. This card's nuts. This is good. All right, so we've established the King Kong killing the snake thing. Strong card. Next thing, Bark Skin Warrior, three mana, one four Amazon with Regen one. So far, it's a Marsh Walker that's three times too expensive. When this creature survives damage, heal it for one. So it's got like extra Regen. Doesn't seem good. This seems like it's not a ton of stats for its mana. Like thinking back to all the Deception cards. Making this zero attack is super easy. Light has a bonus two copies of Light's Levy now. This card doesn't seem like it's strong enough. But what about Druid of the Cycle? How is this card? A four mana, three, four with Echo. So uh, so far it costs one mana too much for its stat line, but it has Echo, so it's a really good sign. Have we read this card yet? I don't know. Um, so it's got Echo. Obliterate a card in any void and add a 1-1 one, one Injured Sprout to your hand. So, Void Manipulation. Nice for dealing with Board Wipe Death. Just like that Death card that kills a Packeria's, this can also screw around with some Packeria's nonsense. And also, just the effect is not bad. Obliterate a card in any void, summon a 1-1. One, one. You don't summon the Injured Sprout, I'm sorry. You just get it in your hand. Still not bad, especially the 1-mana one 1-1 one, one version. This could be good. It's an Amazon we've talked about before with like this thing, like four mana Amazons that are have like decent stat totals or are convenient for the buffing aspect. So uh, this seems like it could be cool. Next thing, Loam Strider. Another, this is the coolest looking tree I've ever seen in my life. This is a two mana zero for yuck. Hate it. Frontline, regen one. Give plus one strength to this creature after it's healed. I like it again. Um, hurting it is difficult. If this was a war card, it'd be a totally different story, right? This would be OP in war right now. Or not right now, this would be OP in war a month from now. But, uh, this is neat. I don't remember seeing a lot of effects that hurt your own stuff. But it can attack, you know, like, you, you can hurt it. It's, it's like a slow-growing creature, I don't know. Definitely some of the best card art in the game. But, next up we have... Lupine Wayfarer. This is the card that Caution revealed during his card reveals. This is a 5 mana 5-5 five, five with Tempt Fate and Roar. Give Blitz this creature if you control another wild creature. Almost all of nature's creatures are wild, so you'll probably have Blitz. Um, just like we have been saying the entire time, let me go into broken record mode. If Tempt Fate can give things protected, this card's insane. Um, if it can't, if Ten Fate doesn't give things protected, it's probably just pretty good. We know Ten Fate can give Twin Strike. Twin Strike with Blitz, kind of nutty. So, oh yeah, this card could be good. Probably good. But next thing, Pact Succession, a 5-mana spell. Summon a random 5-mana wild creature. It attacks the strongest enemy creature. If your creature dies, summon that creature again. Cool. So as I was reading it, I was like, why would you run this when you could just run a five mana wild creature of your choice and not have to deal with randomness? But like five mana spell, get a creature that's probably worth five mana and maybe kill another creature? Like, that's some pretty good tempo. 
is it good enough to push out things like Falling Star? Probably not. I don't know. This is interesting. This card might be good. It's definitely cool. Cool, new. I like it. Uh, but on to the next thing. Another Amazon. Warrior of Paradise. Four mana, 3-3 three, three Amazon with Blitz. After this creature attacks, give plus two strength to a random other friendly creature. And it has Blitz, so it's immediate. Um, that's probably pretty good. Like, right off the bat, it strikes me as, like, a less flashy Mordo's Daughter. And Mordo's Daughter is really good in Amazons. But this doesn't have the prerequisite of needing Amazons to work. So you can put this in any nature deck. Obviously, it's best in Amazons because of the way that it's in Amazon. But the, this card seems good. Yeah, I'm, I'm about this card. This is one of the, the good nature cards so far. But let's go into Plan the Hunt. Um, plan the Hunt, I think, should just make it so your opponent's cumulative health total equals 8. It doesn't seem to be what this does, but let's jump into it before I start criticizing things. Heal each friendly character for 2, then give them hidden for, give them hidden for a turn. Is this the deception card? Okay, well, the, the point of this thing is... Um, it makes this Loam Strider nuts. Like, it's really good with Loam Strider. Also, like, there's a lot of stuff that you're doing to get these injured sprouts, like, in your hand or on the border, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, healing them is good. And what else does this card do? Gives them hidden for a turn. Okay. So you play this, you turn your injured sprouts into full-fledged broccolis. Then they're hidden for a turn, and then you play Wildfire. Easy peasy. Um... This seems like a card that's only good in combination with cards that I would also consider not very good, which is not a great combination. You don't usually want to run two mediocre cards that are only good when played together. So this could be cool, but I wouldn't get my hopes up on that. That's a that's a solid thumb sideways. Um, Forest Heart Dryad is the next card. We're finally back on the wild train, even though these are definitely two Amazons. Um, but I digress. This has Echo as well. After a friendly creature attacks, heal it for two. Oh, didn't... This is another card that, like, Caution revealed, maybe. No, the card he revealed had a cool moon in it. Nobody knows for sure. I'm, go I, I'm going insane. I said in the beginning of this video, it's too many hours of looking at new cards and reading nonsense words. But I digress again. Uh, after a friendly creature attacks, heal it for two. Eh. The Echo version is good. It's synergizing with all these Injured Sprout things, but, like, the Injured Sprouts are bad on their own. They die to Axe Women. So it's like, can you really afford to play so many mediocre cards in one deck that all need to be played around the same time to be good? I doubt it. But that brings us into our last epic card, United Reinforcements. Uh, give two of the following to each of your Amazons and Wild Creatures. Cool. If, it's, if it says to each of your Amazons and wild creatures and it's a nature card, couldn't they have just said, do this to all your creatures? Semantics. Um, so, plus two strength. Plus one, plus one. Or plus one health, then heal for two. All good options. So if you pick plus two strength and plus one, plus one, you're giving all your creatures plus three attack. And that's a lot. So, United Reinforcements. Seems good. Got a cool moose on it. I like it. Alright, so let's jump into our first legendary dragon, the Dawn Wolf. It's not dragon, it's Dagon. Dagon the Dawn Wolf. It's a 3 mana, 2 3 wild creature with blitz and regen. So far, pretty nutty. When this creature is healed, give it plus 1 plus 1. Alright, well, this is making me want to run these healing cards a little bit more. This is good. This is like a decent creature. It's got immediate impact. It heals itself, so you don't even need these other mediocre heal cards. This is cool. Card art's also like kind of nuts. It's only two colors, but it looks so good. I'm not talking about the card art. That's not what anybody cares about. This seems good. It's a wild creature. It's weaker than Underbrush Boar, and one more mana than Underbrush Boar, obviously, but it's like reminiscent. And the regen, this has to be good, right? This is this is this does too much to be bad. But uh Silk Spite. 
is the next card we are talking about, a 5-mana 3-3 three, three legendary wild creature. Uh, after a creature is healed and roar, summon a 1-1 one, one, uh, noxious arachnid with deadly. Uh, let's see, it then performs an extra attack on a random valid target. Sorry, the text is really small. I had a hard time reading it. That sounds good. It's roar and when healed. Ooh. When it's healed or when anything is healed? Hold on. After a creature is healed and roar. Wow. So that's that's also like regen stuff too. This is interesting. And then you got a bunch of deadly underbrush boars floating around? Is this card nuts? No, it's not nuts. It has bad stats for its mana cost. And it requires you to have a board state that already has regen stuff. However, like, as nature, and as a wild nature deck, you're probably going to be playing regen stuff. This card's really interesting. I like this one a lot. I'm excited to see if this card is good enough to see play. And if it is, it's going to be so impactful. Like, that's so cool. All those deadly things. Now, I like, remember, like, a minute ago when I was, like, healing is dumb. You have to play all these bad cards and make it good. We're starting to get some good cards in here to make the cards good. Um, I'm getting stoked on it. But next one is Dahlia, the Night Gardener. A 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Amazon with Echo. These are the best stats for an Echo creature we've seen so far there. I got high hopes for this. When a friendly creature is healed, summon a 1-1 one, one Injured Sprout for more healing. And Echo. This is probably good. Because you can play this on curve. Like You can just play this on turn 3 and feel pretty okay about it. And then you have the better version, which is the Echo copy. Like The biggest issue I've seen with these Echo cards is playing the first version is usually so weak that like what if it's too much of a tempo loss and you just lose the game this is not that much of a tempo loss three mana three threes get played all the time this card's probably good even if even if its effect is like mediocre and requires like outside parties to help it it's probably still good enough to see play so that's that that is nature so join in the next video for our final looking at all the new cards and stuff segment when we talk about neutral, that was nature. We got Amazons. We've got wild stuff. We've got tempt fates. I've almost gone completely insane. Tune in later on this channel for the final installment of looking at the new cards. Until then, I am the Mudman and have a wonderful day. Hey, you. Did you know that subscribing to the TST YouTube channel will increase your win rate by 6.9%? So what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications. And while you're at it, equip Scythe the Harvest and attack the like button directly in the face. Bye bye